Bonjour, good morning. Welcome to our second live stream from Starrett 2022 in Paris. As you can see, I'm still in the uh, French tricolor colors. I like to welcome also uh, Dan Keller with me here on the MR TV channel. Yes, good morning. The topic today is the factory and on-site testing of very long AC and DC cables. Maybe we should introduce ourselves first. So my name is Uwe Kaltenborn. I'm heading the high voltage engineering team at Highvolt. And I'm Dan Keller. I'm responsible for sales um, utility business at Highvolt. Talking about very long cables, to me the first question would be anyway, what are the drivers towards longer and longer cable distances? Yeah, one of the um, one of the drivers is a so-called NIMBY effect. Yes, it, that means um, everybody would like to support the uh, energy transition, but not in my backyard. That means uh, there are some resistance if you have the overhead lines uh, uh, directly uh, closed in 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 a certain region. Yeah, the energy transition is the right uh, buzzword as well, because we have to anticipate that we also have an increasing dislocation between the generation centers as well as the um, consumption areas, and therefore we have to anticipate increasing power factors, uh, power loads uh, to be transported from A to B from the generation to the consumption centers. Yeah, and also not to forget, we are normally talking now about investments um, of transnational or multinational um, projects, and such investments of, are, of course, increasing much at the moment. So I think we should start a little bit more technical, so that's why it's good to dive into the differentiation between on-site testing as well as factory testing. So factory testing itself, there we have to anticipate at first the existing infrastructure of cable factories. So that means their test systems has to be adopted to the existing test halls on one side. Nevertheless, the highest stress the cable will ever experience in the whole life will be laying out the cable, testing and commissioning during our, the whole installation process. So that means testing cables on site will be one of the key requirements to guarantee also the functionality, reliability of a cable system. Yeah, and this leads uh, exactly at the end to the, um, to the requirements of such um, on-site testing. And um, the main intention for that is it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a first step to um, test the integrity of the complete cable. Um, that is tested in the factory already. And the second point but is also to test um, the proper installation of the cable joints after laying. Yeah, cable joints, this is uh, another important topic here. We need to anticipate also that the uh, probability of failures are most likely caused also by the cable accessories here, the terminations and the cable joints. And uh, when we are looking in some of the secret brochures, uh, taking care of reliability surveys, then we can find out that accessories, especially the joints, are one of the key elements which tend to fail more often in the cable system. To refer correctly to that, so I need to write it correctly, the technical brochure 815 and uh, 379, these are the two brochures which have then a complete overview about the reliability and uh, failure mechanisms in high voltage AC and DC cables. Mm -hmm. So, and maybe some, some words, um, how to make the tests um, of the cables uh, after installation. Um, normally, for the AC cables. This is something Highvolt, for example, offered, offered already since uh, many years. So we have 280 systems running um, worldwide with the so-called WRW um, system that are cable trailers um, that can be used for the AC cable um, testing around the world. Um, I think it's a, a huge amount and, of course, also a huge um, um, experience in this topic. Yeah, so uh, we clearly are market leader with this uh, worldwide footprint. 
the issue what we have to face is that uh, in the end, uh, with increasing power, our, our, the capability to transfer power over the cables, also the testing capabilities have to be increased. And uh, that leads then to the question, okay, how can you then realize that in the right way? To, here I would like to show a little bit uh, what we have done on the engineering side. For that, I have to hand over my cards to Dan for a moment, because if you imagine that we have a uh, reactor for uh, cable testing as we have it designed in the past, and we have one unit during the test, in the end, we developed a completely new design where we put four of these kind of reactors in the volume of two in the end. So that means by, uh, by increasing the testing power by a factor of four, we only increase the volume and uh, uh, the weight of the test system by a factor of two. So internally, we call it the XXL reactors. Uh, we have there also a very nice uh, official name for it. And uh, nevertheless, that was the way forward also to prove very, uh, very long cables uh, with an, in a very efficient way. I think, I think from the engineering point of view, um, very interesting development. And just to get an, just to, just to get an idea, uh, what is possible to test, um, or how, how it is possible to test the cables. With the six reactors in parallel, um, at a voltage of 260 uh, kilovolt, it's possible to test such cable lengths of 150 kilometers. This is, at the moment, like the typical length of a cable um, between, uh, for example, converter station and, and cable transition station. Dan, here I have to jump in shortly, because yeah. uh, you will find also figures like five, or seven, yeah. are the six reactors is dedicated to the average of the typical cable type. So if the cable type changes uh, regarding the capacitance or per kilometer, then you might have lower or even a little bit higher. This is a very important hint. Testing um, power required, so yeah. therefore, the average will be six for the 150 Correct. kilometers. As you mentioned, our engineering team is always calculating uh, for each project and cable type so the correct number of um, of, the, of the reactors. But sometimes there's also a requirement for a higher voltage. That means up to 396 kV. This depends a little bit on the, also the testing philosophy of the cable operator. And for that, it is also possible to install um, um, always two reactors in series and to come at the end to a an, to an total amount, to a higher amount for this, for this typical cable, for example, with up to 12 um, um, reactors. And for that, yeah, what, what, we, what, what I would like to say with that is we uh, designed a modular system and we can um, um, connect up to 20 XXL reactors together in order to fit to different cables, cable lengths and also cable types. Yeah, why are we doing that at all? I the most important thing is that we need to guarantee also a reliable uh, test environment to do partial discharge testing. For partial discharge testing, you have different opportunities. When we're talking about our AC, so you can utilize the conventional uh, PD measurement systems, or as we have presented also in the past, you can see here on my left, then also uh, our non-conventional HFCTs uh, also suitable then for the PD measurements. Why we need the partial discharge measurement, it's uh, especially for testing the correct installation of the cable joints because there in the dielectric interface, we have the uh, most critical uh, uh, condition to initiate installation failures, leading then also to partial discharges and later on maybe to a breakdown of this interface. And therefore, it's important to also to guarantee on-site a test voltage, which guarantees you in the uh, suitable test duration the initiation of potential partial discharges so that you can detect them and you can sort out potential failures before they happen. Mm -hmm. Important point. I think one, one additional point um, we should also 
we should also address is um, the testing um, of the DC cables. Um, normally, during the commissioning tests, uh, we yeah, normally the normal uh, the way would be to, to apply a DC voltage to the DC cables in order to test them before operation. But we have one topic: it is not possible to get any information about the quality um, of, of, the, of, the, of those cables, and therefore. What is recommended in many um, seeker brochures now is to use um, the AC voltage also for the DC cables. That means to use um, such an XXL reactor before operation with the um, um, DC voltage to make this AC test. We had to report out of the cable session from yesterday. There is a uh, cable project between uh, Belgium and uh, Germany uh, where they exactly have done the testing in that way. Uh, 70 kilometers of uh, DC cable that was uh, tested with AC first to uh, check the integrity of all the cable accessories and in the second step to do then our DHVDC test uh, for the final commissioning. Uh, what I would like to address as well is that, uh, yeah, our, one of the problems will be also that uh, when we come up with the um, 12 reactors on one end of the cable that you have then potentially a space issue uh, to uh, in install such a test system. So there, we also have a solution for it because you can also put a certain amount of directors at the other end of the cable so to utilize them as the compensation reactor at the far end of our cable under test. Yeah. And in case you are interested in further information, we are here at Secret Boot and would be um, very happy to uh, welcome you to, at our boot in order to give you uh, some more information. You can also um, go to our U YouTube channel, to our website, or can contact us by email. We are um, open to answer all of your open questions. Yeah, then, thank you very much for watching our, our short our stream here from our CK and looking forward to our stay in contact with you. Thank you and goodbye. Bye bye.